Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. And in today's video, I want to talk with you about how I am making the hourglass blocks. And that's what this is uh, that you can see in front of you, the hourglass block, because it looks like an hourglass. And it is the uh, main unit that I'm using to construct a quilt that I drew using electric quilt and it's basically a strawberry. The sun is kind of going in and out behind the clouds so I have to adjust the light as this light outside changes but anyway this is uh, the pattern and I drew that uh, using electric quilt and I call it my blushing berry and it's basically like a really um, graphic large strawberry and uh, this is like the whole quilt. So it'll be, uh, it says 64 by 80 when it's done, which is a good size. So I guess that's like a throw. Anyway, you can see that uh, the body is all hourglass shapes. And I even did this middle part of the stem as an hourglass. So uh, that's what this is about. And, you know, I've just got all different kinds. And I tried to make sure that it has something different on each side. And um, I really like how they look. So this part I bought is a fat quarter bundle. Uh, and these I had. And I bought these for a Valentine project that I did a while back. But if you want to know more about this, which is a Bella fabric, I got it from Fat Quarter Shop. And just have a look uh, in the last uh, video that I made. And it will talk about... Uh, the video right before this one, I should say. It will talk about this fabric choice. And uh, I thought I would show you how I'm making them because, uh, honest to goodness, I just sort of messed around last night, a little before dinner, and uh, maybe an hour after, and I have almost all of the blocks for the berry already made. So it came together so fast, I thought I would show you how I'm doing it. I will also tell you that... I'm using two cutting mats, so I'm using the regular <clears throat> flat cutting mat to cut all my um, squares and trim the triangles. And then here, I'm using this for the final squaring up. I, I really, I do like my rotating mat, but we'll put it to the side for now. So something I like to talk about is um, how do we get to the shape? And... Uh, I like to talk with you about how you can come up with your own little designs and projects and things instead of having to always rely on a physical pattern to tell you exactly how to do something. So anyway, this hourglass, I want it to be a finished size of eight and a half. And basically what I'm doing is making two half square triangles and sewing them together. And I'll show you how that works. Um, but there's a lot of seam allowance and trimming to get to the size. So whatever size you want your hourglass unit to be, in this case eight and a half, you add one and a half inches to the measurement. So to make an eight and a half inch finished hourglass, I'm going to need two 10 inch uh, squares. If you wanted to make something that was five and a half inches finished, then you would be cutting, what, seven, yeah, seven inch squares. So inch and a half. <laughs> okay. Math, not my strong point. <gasps> oh gosh, but anyways, it's interesting because, I mean, <laughs> the, where you start is so much bigger than where you finish. But, you know, you're losing a whole half an inch because you've got two seam allowances and then you want plenty of room to trim down because the trick with this block is that it's uh, it's all bias. So even though it's really easy, it's not. <laughs> okay, but there's a lot of stuff like that in quilting. Um, so you just want to be really careful in how you handle the fabric, how you press the fabric. Uh, definitely use definitely use some starch, and just uh, yeah, be really careful in how you handle everything because it's all bias. And you want the extra room because you might have to. Um, maneuver or fiddle with your uh, squaring up just a little to get it right on the money. 
Okay, so we start with, uh, we're going to want two 10-inch squares in this case. And you're going to um, lay them right sides facing. Oops, so you can see, right sides facing. I guess it's kind of the same. Um, and then what I always do is mark my sewing lines <clears throat> a quarter inch out from the diagonal. And I sew right on the line. And then what I'll do is sew it and then uh, come back and trim it. But um, I like to secure and draw the lines. So once you've sewn that, you're going to come back. It's going to look like this. And if you, if you just make one square that you then turn into the hourglass, then what you'll have is what you usually see when you see an hourglass unit, which is like uh, two prints and two backgrounds type of thing. Uh, but for this one, you've got something different in each quadrant. The way that you achieve that is by making uh, two different sets of half square triangles. So you can see I've already sewn that one. So this is going to be one of the half square triangles. And then here's the other. And you're going to just put them together. This isn't going to work very well. I can't really show you. Oh, yes, I can. Yes. Here we go. No, that's not it. This way. Here it is. Okay, that took me a minute. So, this is what you would wind up having for your finished. So, I've already sewn the 10 inch squares together, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press before I cut. And I do that to set the stitches, and that way I can set the stitches and really get everything uh, flattened. I can do another uh, spray of starch. And it's just good because then you don't stretch anything because this is all bias. <laughs> okay, so you want to be really careful. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, just go over and uh, press both of these and uh, get them ready. And then I'll come back and uh, we'll put it together. Okay, we're back. And I also sewed the uh, half square triangle that I just used in the last uh, uh, set up to show you how I drew the lines. I went ahead and sewed it too. So I've got three sets of um, half square triangles here. And I found that when I'm making the hourglass, it's kind of nice if you have three because then you can like get really, um, you can get multiple combinations. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I want to say one more thing, and that is. Uh, these solids. They're a Bella solid and I got them uh, from Fat Quarter Shop. She did a specialty Fat Quarter bundle of these shades. It was mainly for Valentine's Day <clears throat> uh, but you know I thought for the strawberry it's they're perfect. So anyway I love these colors and the way they go together and everything but what was interesting was it got a really bad review on the site. Um, so I'll link you over to it. I'll give you an affiliate link if you like this. It'll be in the description. Uh, she is out of them right now, so I don't know if she'll make them or not, but you can always get on the list um, if you like it. Uh, but I was surprised at the review. I'm going to go leave my own because I think it's beautiful. But anyway, all right, let's go back to <laughs> this the subject at hand, which is making the hourglass. So you've got uh, two half square triangles. And uh, I'm using two different uh, HSTs. Usually when you see it, they're making it with the two of the same. We're not doing that. We are uh, mixing it up. Okay? So, and then what I did was everything, I matched a light and a dark, and I pressed to the dark side. So what we're going to do now is we've made our HST unit from the 10 inch square. We have not trimmed it. You can see the dog ears are still there. We're going to put them right size facing. And we want to put 
uh, the darks on opposite sides. And then we want to have the center seams nest. So we're just going to just kind of fiddle with it. You'll have to mess with it some to get it right where it needs to be. But the main place where you want it to be perfectly lined up is in the middle. And you can fold your squares back and see if they line up and that's really really good. And then that will also give you a preview of the finished uh, block which I love it. Okay, let's be real. So what I will do is I'll just go ahead and pin it in that middle. Because, you know, I've, I've come this far. I don't want it to get messed up now, right? And then I will pin it just to hold on the sides. And then what I want to do to get that look is I want to then sew uh, perpendicular to the center seam. And I'm going to line up my uh, quarter inch line with the corners, the opposite corners. And I'm just drawing on my sewing line. That's just how I like to do it. That's what works for me. You have to find what works for you, but this is how I like to do it. Okay. Might need to move this. Okay. There we go. So now what I'll do is I'll lay out uh, all of them and uh, set up sewing lines that run perpendicular. Okay, so I'm going to set them all up and then I'm going to sew them all and uh, then I'll come back and show you what we have. But at that point we're just about done. It goes really fast. Okay, we're back and uh, I just want you to see how it looks on the wrong side. Uh, so you've got your seam going this way. That was the first uh, HST unit that we made and then we put two of them together uh, matching the seams and, and the center and sewed perpendicular to that seam and uh, yeah this is what you get so you can fold it back and that's what your uh, your, your unit's going to look like and uh, so what I would do is I would um, press it in this state to set my seams and then we come back cut it apart and then press it open and then you'll have something like this. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, this is your, your base unit. And we want to get it down to that eight and a half inch finished size. And you can see they're, they're a bit off. Yeah, okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is to get my rotating mat and we're going to set that up make sure you can see that I'm filming this without using my external monitor which is my phone uh, because it's, it's such a pain to set up to be honest and I just wanted to make the video for you so I can't, I have to look to the back of the camera to see what I'm doing. I really need a new camera. Okay, uh, here is the unit and it's on my rotating mat and uh, I swear by these Creative Grids rulers. I really do. I love them. I have them in almost every size. Uh, yes, they're expensive and you don't have to buy them all at once. You can split up. It doesn't have to be all at one time. But I just... Um, I love the information that it gives. It gives a lot of uh, detail and it really helps me to get my best possible units because, you know, when you start putting all these pieces together and you've got that great big quilt top, it's a lot going on and, you know, I want the process of construction to be as easy as possible and to look as nice as possible. And you get that from careful trimming on that unit. And so I personally 
like to use the square and the size that I need for my finished unit. And that helps me to not make a mistake in cutting the size. And uh, it doesn't confuse my brain because I don't do well with all of the little markings and I have a hard time using a larger uh, square to size down. Anyway, that's my story. It might help somebody, but what the thing is, okay, with the creative grids. So you've got all these lines, but what we want to do is line up the diagonal on a diagonal and make sure those corners are going out of these seams. And then it's got this little center um, uh, unit, uh, I don't know what you would call it, marking. And uh, if you've done your job right, then that would be dead center in your uh, point of the block. And in my case it is, which doesn't happen all that often. <laughs> so this is exciting that it happened on camera. Uh, but anyway, you want that center in the middle, and then you want those lines to line up with the seams. And then what you really want to have is these corners line up with uh, these seams. And if you have all of that going, then you will have a perfect block. And uh, so we're just going to trim it down. <laughs> See, I already moved it. It's like, uh, what, the best way to do it is to have fingers down and a hand off to the side and you're just pressing down with all of your might to make sure that roller does not move. I love the rotating mat because then I don't have to pick up or move anything. And there it is, your perfect unit. Oh, it's so beautiful. I don't guess that's too dark, uh, clouds. Uh, but anyway, that's how you do it. And uh, this is similar to the units that I made in my envelope quilt. The envelope quilt was basically um, this on one side and then a solid on this side. But it was the same type of thing the uh, the setup and the sewing of everything it was pretty much the same thing you know the um, sewing perpendicular perpendicular seams now see this side I've got a hand on the mat and nothing moved so don't get ahead of yourself when you're doing this and, um, you know, it's a little bit of trimmings, but I don't feel like it's, um, like it's crazy or unmanageable, you know? And, you know, I have a perfect block. And when you have a really good foundation going in, all of your uh, uh, units will just go together so much better just piece together and so uh, you know you're gonna have a lot of uh, intersections at corners to get to line up so there's there's a lot it's it's simple but it's not you know that is that is the way of quilting <laughs> but anyway uh, so let's see here's the trimmings is that it? yeah so that's that's the trimmings from one I don't think that's terrible I mean that's like I don't think it's even an inch. So you're sacrificing this uh, small strip of fabric. I guess for some people that might be too much. For me, I can I can live with it. So from the initial 10 inch uh, cut, your starting point down to your final unit, this is all you're losing. Um, yeah, I can totally live with that, but I'll let you decide. If you feel like it's too much, you can size it down a little, but, you know, experiment with it. But I'm going to tell you to size up the inch and a half, because then you'll you'll always have uh, beautiful, manageable units. And, you know, that's what I want when I get to the end of my project is, you know, um, a piece that's going to go together quickly and easily. So, okay, that's it. Uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. And you can just kind of get a feel for how all of these are going to fit in. 
and you know I wound up working in some uh, violets and um, peachy colors. This is a little more yellow than anything I went with here but that's fine. But you can see it's mixtures of lights and darks and I just thought that gave the most dimension to the uh, to the piece. So uh, I believe I've got all of these done and then all you have to do is to make uh, six half square triangles which are these uh, edges of the berry and um, this berry part is basically ready to go and then the top and all that is is half square triangles and here I did it with uh, the hourglass so yeah that's uh, that's it and then of course the border and if you want to know what the fabrics are that are in the border you should go look at the other video and I'll make sure that I link to it for you so okay that's it for today I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this helps and I uh, as always really appreciate you being here and watching okay I'll see you next time uh, until then happy quilting